Hackchi 2 for the Super Nintendo Classic Mini by Cluster M, I hear you say. Yes, please. Hello everyone and welcome to the Game Shed with me Mark and today I'm super excited to bring you the SNES Classic Mini Soft Mod and it's really simple and easy and it is official Cluster M has brought us another beautiful soft mod for the SNES Classic this time. So all you need for this soft mod is three things. First of all, Hatchy 2 version 2.2. RetroArch version 0.8 and shed loads of games. The reason you need RetroArch 0.8 is because there's a few little niggly games within the SNES library that you will need to run RetroArch for instead of the built-in emulator. Right, so first of all, I'm going to leave the links in the description below for the sites that I use in this video. So we have Hackchi 2.2 and we have RetroArch 0.8. So first of all, let's open Hackchi 2.2. Here we go. Hackchi 2. So all you need to do is grab all the files that are in that zip folder and chuck them into somewhere that you will remember where they are. I've created a Hackchi 2 folder on my C drive. Nice and simple. Let's close that down. Minimize that and we can have a look at the folder. Here we go. And there you will see Hackchi 2 is in there. If you end up with this Windows protected your PC nonsense, just click run anyway. When opened, you will see it opens up with NES Classic or SNES Classic. Choose the SNES Classic Mini. Hello there, I'm very glad that you are using Hackchi 2. Thank you so much for all your work, Cluster M. This is amazing. Click OK. And at this stage, I would suggest you dump your kernel. That means you're dumping the original image that is on your SNES Classic Mini. That's what you want to come back to if you manage to mess it up and you can just restore that one. I've already done it, so I don't need to. Let's crack on. All you have to do is click Add More Games. Go to your ROM folder. I have a ROM folder here. Nice and easy, specially set up for this. So if we just highlight all those and click Open, it will process the games. I'm shortening the sequences in this video just to make it a little bit easier for you to digest. Next thing we want to do is get the cover art sorted. So if you highlight all the games and click download box art for selected games, it will run through every single game and it will give you the lovely cover art. So let's have a look. What have we got? Aladdin, Arkanoid, Axley, Chrono Trigger, loads and loads of awesome games that should have been on the SNES Classic Mini. So there we go. We have confirmed that we have all the box arts. The next thing you have to do is simply click on Synchronize Selected Games with NES slash SNES Mini. When it asks you if you want to flash the kernel, just say yes. Turn off your SNES Mini, plug it into the USB port in your PC and hold reset and then turn it back on again if you haven't got the drivers already installed you will need to click that little button right there that says install driver i already have them installed so i don't need to bother it will go through some lovely stuff right now i've shortened that sequence it is a fair amount longer when you're done click ok and you can upload your games it will do that automatically because i've already pressed synchronize games once again we're through to a done button. Let's click OK. Let me show you a couple of the uh, settings that are available to us. I like to do these before I boot up the SNES for the first time. Uh, you can select your reset button. Instead of pressing reset on the SNES itself, SNES Mini should I say, I prefer to use start and select right here, but you can choose any button combination you want. Click on settings again. You can mess about with the pages slash folder structure. Um, I'm just going for the original games in root, automatic and subfolder. But I'm just going to change uh, maximum games here to 50. I don't think I'm hitting that, but I'm just going to do it anyway. If you want to change that to be all of the games on the main screen, then beware there is a bit of a bug at the moment that says, uh, I think it's about 63 games as the maximum on the main screen. And it's to do with the... Uh, cover arts when you've got too many cover arts it can cause you problems so once you've saved that just click ok minimize everything down and we'll switch on our snes classic mini 
So here we go, this is what it looks like. There's all your original games. And you have a folder there called More Games. I don't mind it looking like this, to be honest. Some people don't mind, uh, don't like the More Games bit, but I don't mind it. And there you go, you can see all our wonderful games right there. Aladdin and all the lovely games I wanted on my SNES Classic Mini. Uh, let's scroll through those and I'm just going to open up Super Mario All-Stars, I think I'm going to open up. Let's get to that. There you go. All right, so what I want to show you just quickly in game is how the save function still works, even though I've chucked this on separately, and how the rewind function still works. So let's get into the game. All right, let's just open up uh, Mario 3, Super Mario Bros. 3, one of my favorite games on the NES, brought home to the SNES <laughs> via All Stars. So let's just click into a level quickly so I can show you. How you save the game still is exactly the same so pause that and then press start and select and you will go back to the main menu we push down press Y Bob's your uncle you have a save state and it still works look at that I've got my save state absolutely fine uh, there may be some instances where you find this doesn't work but it just may need uh, an update to hack G2 but let me know in the comments if you find something that doesn't work so then we hit X and we do the rewind fast forward function just to test that works here we go rewind that and when we press start and we start again from the point we left off beautiful all works lovely I wanted to kill him that's why I did it so I have just one more thing I want to show you before we end the video and that is the usage of retro arch the reason for Retro Arch, like I said previously, is because there are some games that don't run too well with the built-in emulator. I think Yoshi's Island is one of them. So let's head on back over to my PC and let's have a look. Best thing to do is just play some games that you've chucked on. If you find any problems with them, then it's best off running them with Retro Arch. Now, we downloaded Retro Arch earlier. It was a zip file. The easiest way to chuck it on your SNES Mini is just to click and drag and chuck into there. And as you see, it's highlighted all the cores and RetroArch itself. So click OK. This will give you the option to have Game Boy Advance games, NES games, and a whole load more. But I'm not going to bother covering that in this video because I just want to get you up and running with your SNES games. So same as before, follow the instructions. Power on your SNES, holding the reset button, and it will go through. And flash the custom image including RetroArch and all those cores. So we're just going to let that finish. There is a few uh, bits and pieces that it needs to do in order to install RetroArch on there. And once it says done, you just click on OK. Very simple. Uh, let's find a game now that uh, has problems. I think Chrono Trigger has issues when running with the built-in emulation, but don't hold me to that. I'm just going to presume it does. So if we just chuck in the dash dash retro arch as you can see there into the command line and then click on synchronize selected games it will specify that that game uses retro arch instead of the built-in so let's go back to the snes mini we're going to go and find the game so let's go through and open up chrono trigger the game we specified to use retro arch instead of the built-in emulator I have heard there are issues with quite a few other games. Um, and as it says in the uh, Hack Chi 2 page, it says 75% of games are fine. So just keep an eye on it if you find any. Then just chuck in the dash dash retro arch. Uh, on this menu here now, press start and select and you will see the retro arch menu come up. This shows that that game is being run by the retro arch emulator, which is SNES 9X instead of the built in emulator. It is literally that simple. I've managed to cover off this video within 10 minutes. I'm absolutely chuffed with that. So thank you everyone for tuning in. I'm going to be back with a few more videos on this. I want to show you how to play Game Boy games and NES games and what have you. But for now, please drop me a like if you've enjoyed the video. And drop me a comment if you find any problems at all. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.